Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Sports Night. I'm Joe Alvaro, and I'm joined by my analyst, TJ Fiorillo. On this episode, we have highlights from the men's and women's basketball team's senior day against West Virginia at the Rack. We will also check in with the baseball, softball, and lacrosse teams in this week's Night Report segment. We'd like to remind you that you can watch this or any episode on demand at rutv.ruckers.edu. If you have any input for the show, you can email us at rutv underscore sports night at email.ruckers.edu. The men's basketball team hosted West Virginia on Sunday for their senior day. Let's go to the highlights. The Knights honored their seniors James Beatty, Mike Coburn, Robert Bumpkins, and Jonathan Mitchell before the team's final game in the rack on Sunday. And Mike Coburn made it his senior day count, playing some spirited ball in the first half, here hitting a couple of big shots to give the Knights an early lead. West Virginia would come back throughout the first half and took a 25-22 lead into halftime. Fast forward now to about six minutes to go in the game with Rutgers down by eight points and battling to make a comeback. Mike Coburn hits another jump shot and then gives a pretty feed to Austin Johnson who finishes it inside. The Knights are now within four points. Rutgers then hit six straight on the foul line to draw within one point with time down to about two minutes. But then here comes back West Virginia hitting two free throws then turning to John Flowers who knocks down the dagger shot that would seal the deal for West Virginia by a score of 65 to 54. So Coburn makes his last home game count, scoring 20 points in the losing effort. Also a good sign with the bounce back performance from Dane Miller. The Knights will look to pick up the pieces this weekend against Providence. With the loss, the Knights fall to a record of 13 and 15 overall, while dropping to a 4 and 11 record in the Big East. What's been going wrong for the for the Knights in their recent streak? Well, a few different things have really gone into this slump that has plagued the Knights since January 26th. You know, team defense has been decent, but soft at times, which has opened up a lot of outside shots for their opponents. You know, also the team struggled at times offensively. They've had dry spells for stretches of games. I mean, even for entire games, look at Louisville from last week. You know, it's been an issue. But overall, they've not played so badly that they deserve to have lost eight games in their last nine games. But that's just how the numbers have fallen. Mike Coburn was one of the prime scorers for Rutgers in the game, a role that he has not been in much this season. Is this a good sign for the Knights? Well, obviously it's a good sign that the Knights got 20 points from Coburn, but that's not particularly his role in this team. He's probably better off as a distributor, which has been his role for most of the season, but he was forced to play a different way on senior day. You know, Mitchell and Beatty were cold for long stretches, which cost the Knights offensively in the long run during the game. Turning the page to their upcoming games, who do the Knights have coming up to round out their Big East schedule next week? Well, the Knights have one very winnable game left, which is on Saturday night against the Providence Friars. They take care of business like they did in their first matchup against Providence. They'll put themselves in a position to play Seton Hall in the playoffs, which would be a big rivalry game and would serve as a rubber match for the two teams during the season. That's sure to be an exciting matchup. Also in action was the women's basketball team, who is looking to build off their win over South Florida last Wednesday when they hosted West Virginia for their senior day. Take a look. The women's basketball team took the floor during their final home game without a senior ceremony, but instead with a vengeance to gain a double bye in the Big East tournament taking place this weekend. The Knights battled back from a nine-point deficit to get the win, and coupled with their Monday win over Seton Hall, they will hold the fourth seed in the Big East tournament. Erica Wheeler scored her career-high 22 points and was supported by April Sykes, Khadijah Russian, and Chelsea Lee. The team got the upset over West Virginia. What did they do well to get the victory? They showed some signs of resilience coming back from a nine-point deficit to get a nine-point win over the Mountaineers. You know, the Knights made just 36% of their shots from the floor, but they did get 18 points from the free throw line, which definitely helped them complete the comeback victory. Who was the most surprising scorer for the Knights in this matchup? Erica Wheeler came forward in a big spot on Saturday. Wheeler is a sophomore guard who averages just not over nine points a game, but her 22-point outburst was definitely a pleasant surprise for C. Vivian Stringer and the Knights on Saturday. I'm really curious to see if she continues in an expanded scoring role as the Knights push towards the NCAA tournament. Who does it look like the Knights will face in their first round of the Big East playoffs? Well, currently as it shapes up right now, the Knights can climb into the fourth spot for the Big East tournament, which will give them the double bye against the winner of Providence and USF's game against the fifth seed in the tournament, who would be either Marquette or Louisville. Stay tuned to Sports Night in the coming week for all the information on the Big East tournaments. Right now, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Night Report and an interview with Amy Zhang of the tennis team will be featured. Alongside TJ Fiorillo, I'm Joe Alvaro, and you're watching Sports Night on RUTV. Before there was a United States, a college was founded in the heart of New Jersey. 
Before I became a CEO in the global marketplace. Before I earned my Super Bowl ring. Before. Before. Before I was hired as the apprentice. Before I wow my audiences on stage. Before I won the Pulitzer Prize. I learned about the world. I earned my degree. I was a Rhodes Scholar. I studied writing. I motivate my students. At Rutgers. At Rutgers. At Rutgers. Jersey Roots Global Reach. My friend Crystal. She was really popular. She had a lot of friends, but just not enough time. She was involved with many different activities and was always going from place to place. So she got really good at texting while driving. And I mean really good. Nothing ever happened to her while she drove. She was the best. But ever since the accident, nothing's been the same. I mean... She still has a lot of friends, but now she has no time. Texting while driving is irresponsible and very dangerous. Don't text and drive. Before there was a United States, a college was founded in the heart of New Jersey. Before there were bowl games, the first college football game was played at Rutgers. Before there were cures for tuberculosis, Rutgers scientists discovered the breakthrough antibiotic. Before the Supreme Court's landmark ruling, a Rutgers alumna helped make the case for desegregation. Before the world changes again, Rutgers will be working on it. Rutgers, Jersey Roots, Global Reach. Want to get the word out about your club, organization, or event on campus, but not sure how? Leave it to the professionals at RUTV. RUTV is a student-run television network dedicated to helping you get the word out on your club or organization. Call the RUTV production department to get started at 732-445-3710, extension 6200, or email rutv underscore psa at email.ruckers.edu, and we'll take it from there. In a few short weeks, you will have a promotion for your club or organization to help spread the word. It's just that simple. What are you waiting for? RUTV is waiting to hear from you. After finishing last season with an overall 6-8 record in their Big East Lacrosse Conference's inaugural season, the men's lacrosse team retooled their roster in order to compete with national powers Villanova, Notre Dame, and Syracuse in 2011. After sweeping Wagner and Manhattan last weekend, the team took to the field against perennial power UMBC in Maryland. The lacrosse, baseball, and softball teams will be featured on this week's edition of Night Report. The Scarlet Knights improved to 4-2 on the season after sweeping Michigan at the New York Mets spring training facility. The team combined to score 22 runs in three games and got solid pitching the entire weekend, giving up no more than four runs in the game. They will take on Georgia Tech this weekend. The softball team got their third win of the season when they pounded Texas Southern in Corpus Christi, Texas by a score of 9-1. Brittany Lindley went 1-2 for two with a run and two RBIs while Kylie Bishop had a hit scored run, and drove in three. The Knights would take on five different opponents this weekend in Hampton, Virginia. The men's lacrosse team built into their already impressive start with a 12-5 win over the Retrievers of UMBC. Kevin Hover led the way for the Knights, tallying a hat-trick while Duncan Clancy scored once and had three assists of his own. The women's lacrosse team beat a powerful Cornell squad for the second season in a row taking it to the Big Red by a count of 11-7. Stephanie Anderson and Marlena Welsh combined for eight points on the day. They moved to 2-0 on the season with the win. A leader on and off the court, Amy Zhang has been the centerpiece of the tennis team's success in the past three seasons. Now a senior, Zhang has her sights set on a Big East championship. Spending all of her career as the number one singles player for the night, she's currently 16-4 on the season in singles play. Crystal Rich sat down with Zhang to discuss what it takes to win both on and off the court. Big East competitive athlete by day and bookworm by night. Being a student athlete can be stressful to say the least. One athlete on the women's tennis team not only leads her team being the only senior, but also won an athletic scholarship twice. Amy Zhang's ambition to win can be seen on and off the court. As a 2009-2010 and 2010-2011 Big East Academic Award winner, Zhang has taken the term student-athlete to a whole nother level. 
So Amy, you led your team last season with one of the best records in singles and doubles. You also had two scholarships practically back to back. Now, how do you balance being such a great athlete with your schoolwork? I think it just has to do with time management and just um, being responsible, like taking your work out when we're traveling or on the road and reminding professors when we're going to be absent and things like that. As the only senior on the tennis team, how are you able to help lead your team and guide them? Um, I think being a leader on a team that's so small um, really has to do with just being a good role model. So just always showing up for practice on time and trying your hardest in practice so that your teammates um, know that you're trying and they try to emulate what you're doing. And in the same, the same thing in a match, like being positive and always um, cheering on your teammates and um, at the same time trying to focus on schoolwork and letting your teammates know that these things are important to you. In your time at Rutgers, what has your biggest accomplishment been thus far? I would say the biggest accomplishment that we as a team have done is um, we made fourth place in the Big East two years ago and that was that's the best that our team has ever done in the history of Rutgers. So I'm really proud of being part of the team for that. Last season, Zhang led the tennis team with a 16-6 overall singles record, eight of those wins being conference victories. She also led in doubles with partner Holzberg for a 14-4 overall record. What are your goals this season for yourself as well as for your team? For myself this year, just to continue what I've been doing the past three years and um, just play as well as I know I can. You know, like, um, I know how good I play and I know if I'm not playing up to um, how I should. So, just not disappointing myself in that regard. And then for our team, um, we've set a bunch of team goals. I think some of the other girls have told you about them. So, just setting those goals for ourselves. How has your coach Ben Buka helped you grow as a player here at Rutgers? Um, I think he's just taught me, along with just being on a team, like um, how to be a good leader, how to manage my time while I'm working, and um, how to consistently um, pump up my teammates while I'm playing with them. So Amy, as the captain of your team, how do you think your teammates would describe you? Would they say you're the rambunctious, outgoing one, mm -hmm. or the soft-spoken, more reserved player? Um, they've definitely said that like I tend to be more soft-spoken than a lot of them. Um, I think one adjective, we had to do like a personality test thing uh, early in the year, and the adjective they used to describe me was stable. So I guess I'm a stable person. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. It's always good to be stable. We uh -huh. actually talked to some of your teammates, so check out what they had to say about you. Yeah. Amy, she's the only senior, so how is it playing with her? I mean, she's great. She's like a great role model. She has played one for almost her whole time here, and she's a great player. So it's good to have her on the team. It's really so, it's like soft-spoken and quiet, but um, that's like something to admire because she gets her work done. She's just like really good grades, like because there's so many scholarships, and um, she's played number one on the team. So mm -hmm. she's an all-around like good person. Yeah. yeah. So Amy, what school will be your biggest competition on the court? I definitely think um, when we play Marquette, it's going to be a huge match for us because whenever we go to the Big East, we're always ranked either one above them or one below them. And um, the year that we made fourth was when we beat them in the, in the um, quarterfinals. So that's going to be big. Congratulations. Hope you can beat them again. Thank yeah, you so thank much you. for talking thank with so us. Much. Make sure to come out and support the women's tennis team. For more information or the full schedule, you can visit scarletknights.com. Be sure to tune in again next week as we will have updates on the women's basketball team as they venture into the Big East playoffs, as well as a preview of the men's basketball team's Big East playoff matchups. We'll also have scores from all of the spring sports teams in action, so remember to tune in every Wednesday at 10 p.m. on RUTV channels 8 and 60. For Sports Night, I'm TJ Fiorillo. My host is Joe Alvaro. Thank you for watching Sports Night on RUTV.